Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 1, Episode 6, Thoughts. This episode is called Zzzt. And, yeah, so, spoilers for the MCU leading up to and including this episode. Another episode I love. Before I get into it, the top link in the description box will allow you to donate to the Say After Strikers. I implore you to do so. And then there are some links to videos that help explain why this is such an important strike. And, yeah, let's... Let's dive in. So, yeah, I did not understand the title of this until a bit into it. But, yeah, I mean, that is F-Z-Z-T. That is basically how you would, you know, that is what it sounds like when there's, like, the static electricity shock kind of thing, which is how the um, virus is transmitted. And, yeah, we open on the the classic of, you know, campfire, ghost story, and then something else scary happens, you know. And I've come to really appreciate how, like, over the Marvel logo, they'll play some music. I'm, I'm not sure they've done it all six episodes, but for at least these last two, they'll play some music that helps us, like, put us... You know, yeah, tell, tell us what kind of story this is going to be. So this time it was this kind of tense horror music kind of thing. Last episode it was like this Chinese music because we open in China. But but yeah. Um, and I agree. Mr. Cross's wailing was truly terrible. And... <laughs> Yeah, so Ward says that the night night gun is an ounce too heavy, and that's you know that's the difference between success and failure. At fifteen hundred, fifteen hundred yard, no no five hundred yards, fifteen you know just yeah, and yeah. So first, Fitz does an imitation. And then, of, of Ward, then Simmons does, and near the end of the episode, Ward imitates himself. So he is aware that people are imitating him behind his back. And, and, and then, yeah, when Ward shows up, you know, they, they struggle not to laugh at him because they were just making fun of him. Uh, yeah, so we're we're told about the yeah. Uh, uh, I like when they're you know in the the camping camp campgrounds. I guess they're called, and like looking at the different places and yeah, you know, for a while, Sky is like this is just a freak story. Oh no, never mind. There's a body hanging in the air. I accept that this is something that needs us to look into, and. <laughs> Yeah, so May has to get some information. You know, she's yeah, she's talking to the the surviving camp. You know, man, man, manager, what, whatever. I don't know what they're called. And you know, she's like staring intently at him as she just wants to do, and slides over the the plate and says, "Have a cookie," <laughs> because yeah, you know, she's not the best at like positive social interaction anymore, so, and, <laughs> yeah, it was, it was very funny that Fitz is like, you know, I can't believe you brought up, a, there's a dead body at my workstation, you know, it's gonna completely, you know, remember last time that we brought a dead body, on the, please don't tell him about the cat, tell him, tell him about the cat, you know, just, yeah, that's, <laughs> And the the thing with you know the it's it's a you know Fitz especially hates the way it smells and you know I think it's it's Melinda May who's like asking so what are you looking for and and Fitz is like a scented candle not you you know just like yeah that was that was pretty funny and yeah it's thought to be a weapon but turns out to be a virus and Coulson stays and talks to the the firefighter you know at the end and yeah um so 
in reality, you know, you may have heard of this thing called 9-11. And the first Avengers was very much invoking 9-11. You know, you have flying... You have Yeah, you have something flying that comes out of nowhere. No, no American saw it coming, unless you're working in the government and have half a brain. And, and the necessary information obviously but yeah then it, it I'm, I'm not saying that the they I'm saying th th there was probably more incompetence than malice that enabled it to, to happen anyway you know flying things that crash into skyscrapers there's there's dust there's first responders you know it, it was a horrible thing but it also brought New Yorkers together you know it's it's very I'm not blowing anybody's mind by drawing that comparison. However, here we're told that later some of the first responders started dying and it had to do with dust, you know, so I don't know if I think this is the most respectful invocation of all the first responders that were allowed to die by callous politicians who just didn't want to take care of the people who literally saved people on 9-11. Um, yeah. But I, I did, I do appreciate this thing of, you know, oh, it was, it was just dust. You know, they don't think about, well, you know, it's an, it's an alien thing. It's a thing you don't know anything about. How could you be sure? Because, you know, yeah, it looks like dust, but it's like little particles that, you know, yeah, and yeah, and and you know, Coulson says, you know, they say I only died for eight seconds, but I know it was more than that. I have to say, after that, you know, they they got the helmet. They're they're aware it's a virus. No one on the team appears to you know the the yeah the people who went near it don't have it you know i i was like how is the episode halfway over when it feels like it's all the way over and yeah we we see that Gemma was infected when she you know she she got very close to the the body near the campground and the the electricity yeah you know Nobody likes getting shocked, but I think it's it's very, very nice that we're not infected by that with a virus that leaves us like two hours to live. And, yeah, you know, because they are headed to uh, the sandbox, that means that, the you know, the, the, the bus will only reach you know, a place to land in three hours, and she has two hours left. She's going to explode, so she's the only hope left. I kind of liked Fitzsimmons bickering. You know, it was... Yeah. And and the, the thing with how he keeps calling it a vaccine when it's really an anti-serum. And she points out the alien was like Typhoid Mary. He takes issue with her referring to the alien as her, I, d I don't quite... Okay, I have a couple theories. I guess maybe he thinks women can't be warriors or women can't have the kind of upper body strength that would make them, you know, be chosen to be part of an army. You don't know very much about the Chitori. Like, there are some animals here on Earth where the female is sig is considered significantly more dangerous than the male, at least under the right circumstances. So that felt a little, yeah, it fits a little bit of a misogynist. You know, there was there was this. There was when he said that the only way Sky could get in the room with the Elon Musk guy was like her boobs. Yeah, I kind of hope that they eventually address this and let you know, you know, misogynists can leave that behind. It is a choice. 
Now, the you know, it's it's not like ethnicity or LGBTQIA plus identity, that kind of thing. That's part of who you are. Um, but yeah, I did like when Fitz, you know, grabs the helmet and goes into the lab to, to help her. That, uh, yeah. And, yeah, once, you know, they, they've tried on the third mouse, and at least, you know, at first it seems like it was a failure, so she, hit, you know, she, she said, and it was really heartbreaking when she tells Coulson, I know about the procedure in these things, but could you tell my dad first? I just think it would be easier on my mum if he heard it from my dad. You know, that just, the you know, her even thinking these things, you know. And then she's like, can I, might I have a private moment with Fitz? You know, and she knocks him out, which, I mean, fair enough. If she, you know, considering she's going to try to jump out of the plane, yeah, she's going to have an easier time. Well, Fitz, do you still think that women can't fight? Anyway, you know, she's... She's jumping out an airplane. He's not going to let her do that. So, yeah, she, she hits him. And, you know, if she hits him while the others are watching, she's not going to have a chance to jump out the airplane. So, yeah. Let's see. And she didn't even have to throw, you know, to, to get Soren out of the plane first. Um, do I have the right capture? And anyway, if you know, you know. And yeah, she she jumps out the, and then we see the third mouse. Or right before she jumps, we see the third mouse was okay. It was just temporarily knocked out, and because of all the electricity, it you know it it like levitated, but it didn't die from the just yeah. And and that is the thing. Like you can't always be sure. Exactly, you know, with with science, you don't always know exactly how something's gonna work, and it might have like side effects you didn't expect or something. You know, this this is not an anti-vax thing. To, to, you know, if if you are in a situation where the vaccine is is you know considered safe by scientists, take the vaccine. I'm just saying, you know, it's a yeah. You, you don't always know. Ultimately, it did work. It just also had this, you know, temporary temporary thing that, just, yeah. And, yeah, it, it was a pretty cool midair rescue. And that is, like, I doubt it ever was, like, different. But, you know, can you imagine if Gemma did... Like, see, oh, the mouse is fine. Okay, well, you know, take take the, the not, not the vaccine, the anti-serum. And that's it. That's the end of the episode. No, you got to have an action beat there. So you got to have the, the fear about, oh, you know, she's going to, yeah. <laughs> and then Ward imitates himself. And Sky hugs Simmons which was sweet, and yeah, we learn it was Coulson who asked for the tests, because he feels like there's something wrong, and, you know, May says, you know, of course you feel different, that, you know, there's no getting around that kind of thing. And it kind of sounds like maybe she died temporarily and was brought back to life, but I might have misinterpreted that. Uh, yeah, and <laughs> Fitz is insecure because it was Ward who saved Simmons, and you know she reassures him, which was also sweet. And and yeah, at the end of the episode, we get back Titus Wellower, who you know I will never turn down some Titus Wellower in in anything. You know he was actually he was in the. It's technically not quite the pilot, but it apparently, like, helped make sure that they could make this, um, the, the one-shot, uh, the Marvel one-shot item 47, 
you know, and yeah, he plays Agent Blake in in both. So, but but yeah, um, yeah, he he's like, you know, this doesn't sound like the old Coulson, and Coulson says, get used to it, which uh, you know is that suggests that he himself is starting to be become more comfortable with the idea that he isn't changing back to the way he was. So, yeah, um, I think that is everything that I have to say. Um, yeah, uh, I, I, um, I think I already did say, you know, I, I kind of like, like the twist that, you know, yeah, we think it's a weapon, and, you know, Ward wanted it to be a person that he could punish for for this, you know, and, and they're all frustrated that it is this, you know, it's it's a virus, it's not something, you know, so, so, yeah, something bad happened, and they don't have anyone to blame, they don't have anyone to get mad at, and that I do think, you know, I think that is a, a good metaphor for, you know, 9-11, it's not that there's no one to be mad at, but a lot of people blamed Muslims, the, the entire group of people, the entire religion, when, like, if you, you know, I'll, I'll admit I, I'm not, like, an expert, you know, but if you look at the Quran, like, there's actually, like, it, it, there's a lot of non-violence, anti-war kind of, you know, it's not trying to, to encourage, you know, it's, and, and you have some, like, you know, yeah, hope, hopefully you already know, there's, you know, moderate Muslims have criticized extremist, you know, yeah, radical Islamic terrorists, you know, it's... Yeah, um, it's you know obviously hating the 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 terrorists who carried out the attack on that day makes sense. Hating Osama bin Laden makes sense. You know, hating the entirety of Al Qaeda makes sense. But the American military had been provoking Islam Muslims in the Middle East. For a long time, they had been told, you know, it is, it is very offensive that you are, you know, that you have American troops in these areas, you know, and honestly, I get the sense that the people who knew that was happening probably thought, you know, eventually they're going to the the Muslims in that area are gonna try to attack those military bases and they're gonna see some action you know those American military men and women are gonna get to kill some some Muslims and that's gonna be that they didn't think that it would lead to attacks on the you know civilians in America but we should you know, Part of the anger should be directed at the people who refused to accept. Like, think about how little it takes for the American military to way overreact. Like, Pearl Harbor, you know, if you just look at it, if you know the, the facts, the attack on Pearl Harbor by Japan was basically just tactics. You know, they were, it was a very clever way, it ultimately didn't work, but it, you know, if you, if you stop thinking about it as, you know, a lot, a lot of Americans see themselves as the good guys, and anyone who they're in a conflict with as, you know, de default the bad guys. If you t strip that away from it, and just look at it, it was tactically, you know, clever. And 
the the I, f I forget was it had the let's see had the Japanese um, declared war, war before Pearl Harbor right it took place before you know so yeah some people would say you know that's that I, I feel like that's a pretty clear declaration and you know there's a lot of American like the American military has never been about fighting fair you know so anyway if you think that Pearl the attack on Pearl Harbor was wrong for one of the reasons I've just mentioned that some do you know that's fine but in response to that America nuked two Japanese cities like and and firebombed a lot of Tokyo you know they they killed they intentionally targeted civilians and killed a lot of civilians and the the nukes I, f I forget if I forget when I last heard it, but I heard a, I don't think it was more than a few years ago. I heard someone say, you know, the effects of the the radiation poisoning is still being seen today. You know, there are still children being born that have you know that yeah that have been affected by the the radi radiation. You know, if you thought that Pearl Harbor was bad. I mean, you could respond by attacking a Japanese military base in a similar way, but instead they did this really awful thing. And and the same was true of 9-11. You know, American military have intentionally murdered a lot of civilians in the Middle East and just have, you know, used 9-11 to justify that. They've they've murdered far more people. I, I'm not sure what exactly the, the number would be. I suppose, let's see, um, so the, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not really seeing, anyway, you know, the American military murdered way more you know, many times more than were killed on 9-11. So, the, the, the fact that this episode very specifically chooses, like, think about how easy it would have been to re- like, a simple rewrite, and there's intention behind it. You know, you, like, at, at first it looks like Tony Diaz is, you know, intentionally doing something. You know, but it wasn't intentionally released. There's no one, there's no person that Ward can punish. And it's a, it's a source of frustration for various members of the team. You know, so that is actually a, a very intelligent and nuanced way to, to explore 9-11. So, yeah, just the, the fact that first responders die although i suppose the moment yeah the moment that they decided to involve first responders to the battle of new york they they're getting into this this problem yeah it would probably have been better if they had rewritten so that it wasn't about first responders but but yeah you know the the yeah I, I do think that the they did of uh, I, I really appreciate that decision and it's it's also something you don't see enough of in American media they they really love the idea that there's a, um, a will behind this that you know we can we can punish in in some way and occasionally that will just has to be you know, bargained with or something and it's you know as you know as far back as you as 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 far back as we have any records of as we have any research that makes sense of 
humanity has seen will in like you know if if there's like an earthquake it's not just an earthquake there's a god who is angry with us and you know for a long time it would then lead to okay well we have to do something to appease the god who sent the earthquake you know and yeah it's it's part of american culture that i i would love to see them try to reckon with more because it is it leads to a lot of harm you know the the fact you know i, I mentioned pearl harbor and 911 and the completely disproportionate counter attacks or responses you know i i don't think those would have been at least not as disproportionate if the people thought of you know things as more like cause and effect instead of there is someone out there that we have to stop in order for for things to get better but yeah um that is everything that i have to say about this episode so until tomorrow Everyone practice their imitation of Ward. <laughs>